Hey guys, so I thought I'd throw up a quick video about a recent acquisition I got, a tool I got. And I just re-picked this up a couple days ago. And I didn't do an unboxing video or a bringing home video. I wasn't even sure that I was going to do a video on it in general. But uh, I figured I'd throw this up there real quick because this is probably going to come up in videos down the road. And I'll just introduce you to my new tool right now. <laughs> he said he's going to introduce you to his tool. <laughs> So if you guys know even a little bit about me, you know I'm not an impulse buyer. I'm not an impulse buyer at all. I like to research projects. I like to research tools, especially what I consider a pretty major tool purchase because I don't want to spend my hard-earned money on something that I'm going to be disappointed in. So I always have three criteria. I have three criteria that I set up uh, in my head when I'm looking for a tool. First of all, cost. It's got to fall within a certain price range. Uh, for it to be something that I feel comfortable spending the money on. Secondly, how far am I willing to drive? If it's something I have to drive to get it, what's the maximum amount of distance I'm, I'm willing to travel? And thirdly, is it going to be able to handle my current needs and any needs that I may foresee for the future? Because I always tend to eat with my eyes, you know? So if, if two is good, 20 must be better on just about anything. That's my philosophy in life. So, when it came to this particular tool, which I'm going to turn the camera on here in a second and, and show it to you, this was actually one, this is actually one of my bucket list tools. And sorry, I got mosquitoes and stuff around me right now and they're just pissing me off. This is one of my bucket list tools. I've been looking for this particular tool, not this exact tool, but a tool like this. Oh, realistically, for about two years, two and a half years, I've been, I have set my criteria and I've been checking out Craigslist, uh, not much on eBay, but mostly Craigslist for this, for a good two, two and a half years. And I'm a patient fella. I'm a patient fella. I've got plenty of other projects, plenty of other interests that keep me busy. If this was all I was searching for, I probably could have found this. Uh, if I didn't mind buying something new, I could have just gone to the store and bought one. But it's not about the buy. You know, it's not about that kill when you go hunting. It's, it's, it's about the hunt. And more than half of the fun is the hunt and the story behind how you found what you found. And me personally, I feel if you save your money and, and you don't impulse buy stuff, it means more when you find the right one and you bring the right one home. But that's neither here nor there. Where was I going with this story? I know I had a story around here somewhere. So I've had this bucket list of tools for about the last five years that I knew in my head when the time was right that I want, that's just what I wanted to buy. The first thing on that bucket list was a TIG welder, a decent TIG welding machine. And if you remember, I bought that Miller right here, the 150 STL, uh, about two years ago now. I think it was about two years ago now. I searched that out. I looked for a long time. I was checking Craigslist every day. Second thing, and I found one, and I'm really, really happy with that Miller machine. It's a good quality TIG welder, and I don't have anything bad to say about that for my needs. Secondly, I wanted a plasma cutter, and I found a plasma cutter after looking for several months. Once I made up my mind, I wanted one. That one didn't take as long, but I found one the beginning of this year. If you remember, I found that century machine, that 20-year-old century machine that cuts like a dream. It's exactly what I need it for. It'll cut the capacity of steels. Uh, types of steel that I'm and metals that I'm looking to do no complaints about that machine I've used it six eight times since I bought it I knew it wouldn't be a daily use item that's why I didn't want to spend two thousand dollars on a machine I got away pretty cheap with that one that one was a super score this one I'm about to show you is a super score let me spin you guys around let's take a look at what the third and final item on my bucket list is so there she is there she is my third and final major tool purchase and if I were to stop buying tools right now for the next 10 or 15 years I would be perfectly content with exactly what I have right now I've wanted one of these for a long 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 time that three longs my grandfather was a machinist and uh, we used to go to his shop my brother and I would sit there on these metal shop stools excuse me we'd sit there on these metal shop stools we'd watch him work we'd watch him create things out of nothing and we'd be fascinated with the watching the what we would call springs, but the the, the curled wire, or curled wire, the curled metal that's coming off the the currently machine being machine part as it's getting cut, or uh, and it was just really really cool. We sit there in fascination as he created things out of nothing, and I always thought, man, that'd be really cool someday to get a lathe. Well, here we are, 30 years later, and uh, I finally am in the right time in my life. I'm in. The, I have the right amount of space. 
and uh, I guess the patience to take up uh, this as a hobby. And while I've had access to one in years past, I've never had my own. Um, but this is very, very cool. And with this comes my ability to be able to use three items that when my grandfather passed away, when we were cleaning out the garage, uh, I was able to salvage three items out of the house that are very, very cool and near and dear to me in a, in a, just a nostalgic kind of way because that's the kind of fella that I am. And I'll show you that in just a sec. So well, what we have here is we have a Logan 10 by 24 metal lathe. This is probably, I haven't got the exact numbers, but these were built for, Mon Logan built these for Montgomery Ward and branded them Montgomery Wards. But Logan built them. They were uh, late 40s, early 50s. I think by the numbers on this one, it appears that it's somewhere in the early to mid 50s this machine is built. And it's remarkably clean. And it fit all three of my criteria and then some. My first criteria was cost. Initially, I wanted to spend 600 bucks on a lathe. I figured that was, that was a pretty fair deal. But the more that I looked at lathes in that $600 range, the more garbage that I saw out there. So I had to raise my expectations a bit after about a year of sticking in that $600 range. I bumped it up to eight, from eight to $900 I'd feel comfortable spending. And uh, that's not what I paid for this. But, and I'll tell you what I paid for this in just a second. The second thing was distance. I was willing to drive 100 miles. That was just some arbitrary number I picked out of a hat. I was willing to drive 100 miles to find this machine. And I found it 23 miles from the house. Scores! So that was cool. That excited me. 23 miles, man, right around the corner as far as I'm concerned. Thirdly, my third criteria was the size. What is going to fit my current and projected future needs? I originally thought I, for my price range I would be getting something smaller. Uh, what's the next size down? Like a 7x18? Meaning you can, you can machine anything. You have 7 inches. Or you can machine anything seven inches high and you know like 18 inches long. This one here you can handle up to a 10 inch diameter, 24 inches between the tool post, the, the tail stock and the, and the face. I can fit a 24 inch piece in there. So this score, score is bigger than I thought. And it came with the lathe and it came with the metal table, this steel table with the drawer that it's sitting on. And I'll show you. It didn't come with a lot of tooling. It didn't come with a lot of tooling. However, however, I have tooling. And going back to what I paid for this, eight to nine hundred dollars is what I was willing to spend. The guy had this. I watched this. This lathe. I watched this lathe for about six months. This exact lathe. The guy started it out at seven hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and I watched him not sell it because he was kind of in a weird location, which is fine for me because I'm kind of in a weird location. I'm not really near any major city that makes it convenient he was kind of in my neighborhood which was perfect so I watched it go down and down every week I watched this for months and months and months until he finally had it listed for four hundred and fifty dollars I went over there and took a look at it I offered him four hundred bucks and he took it so I got this machine for four hundred dollars which I think is just just awesome just absolutely awesome so let's get a little closer and take a look acorns falling out of the tree so you're probably asking yourself, what kind of garbage did this guy buy for $400? And yes, I've already been messing with it. I finally got it all set up last night and was cutting some stainless steel tubing. Look at the bed on this thing. Look at how beautiful the, bed, the beds are, the rails are. Everything functions just remarkably smooth without any... I can go end-to-end -end on everything, lock-to-lock, -lock, without any binding, any hesitation tail stock is just look at that it's beautiful it's beautiful oh, where'd it go it's beautiful this thing this thing forms and it's just glides look at that just glides oh it's awesome 400 bucks it does have two things wrong with it i'll tell you what's wrong with it real quick and then i'll show you what tooling it did come with first of all it needs a belt oh wham it needs a belt. This belt's kind of janky. It works, but it, it's pretty worn out. I'll admit, that thing's pretty worn out. And secondly, the super slow gear, you can see right there, it's missing a couple teeth, missing like three teeth. One, two, three, four, no, excuse me, I can count. One, two, three, and then that one's four. That's only used when you're in super, super slow mode. 
I'm not even going to worry about that. Honestly, I could probably come in and TIG weld these gears and then hand cut them because, I mean, I've built spline shafts before by hand. So I'm not that worried about it, but I can get this whole stepped pulley with this gear from eBay for about 70 bucks shipped. So. It did need a new pulley. He had a, this is a half inch or half inch shaft, half horsepower motor. He had a, a pulley on here, inch and three quarters pulley on here with a five eighth shaft hole, and he had it shimmed up, and it was kind of wobbly and janky. So I went and I bought a new a new pulley that was like three bucks for that little bitty pulley. The gears are all in fantastic shape. It didn't come with any extra gears, just the gear set that's in here right now. The auto feed works perfectly. You can see there's been a repair on this little tab. But, but the auto engages and disengages forward, reverse on the auto feed beautifully. The, all the gears work without any binding and uh, the teeth are nice and square. Shows very, very little use. Very little use at all. So let's, let me show you what tooling it did come with. So here's the drawer. This is, these are my tools. All these hand tools are mine. It did, it did not come with the, the chuck wrench or in the chuck key or any of that stuff. This is the pulley that I bought. Yeah, inch and three quarters, inch and three quarter, half inch bore. Two dollars and eighty-nine cents. Made in the US of A. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see. It has a five inch three jaw chuck that it came with. The one that's currently on it is a six inch three jawed chuck. It has a live center. Has two live centers. Uh, has where is it? it has one dead center, which is these these go in, in the tailstock piece. And I really wanted to drill uh, to be able to drill holes. And I had this in my inventory. This is a half inch. I figured I have to fabricate something. This is a drill chuck off some long gone drill. It's a half inch drill. And let me get this out of the way. So I was messing around with this live center here. And this has a bearing on it. This has a cool little bearing. That's why it's considered live because it spins. And I was messing around with this thing and I realized, and I'm kind of a noob, I guess, at this type of end, uh, tailstock tools. But look, that unscrews. And if I put it in there straight, hello? What am I going to do? There it goes. So, yeah, scores. So that will fit in that tailstock and then I can drill stuff. Zoom. So that's pretty sweet. And then it comes with some other tooling that's really not meant for this machine. So as I mentioned, I've already been cutting with it. I was messing around with that stainless steel tubing. Oop, there it is that my buddy Troy sent me. I just cut a bevel on here just for funsies. And then I parted it off. And then I had two pieces of stainless and just out of funsies. <laughs> just to see. Just to see. But look at look at how look at that. You can't even see the seam right now because I I faced these off, right? I stuck this in the chuck and I came in and I made sure these were square. Both ends were square just for funsies. I cut down about 50% of the outer material here. Cut down about 50% of the... Damn phone. Cut down about... And then, there yeah, it fits. Now that would be an awesome weld. If I came in and TIG welded that, just fusion welded it, you'd never see it. You'd never see it. One of the things I... I one of the three things that I acquired when we were cleaning out my grandfather's tools and whatnot. The three things that relate to this mill is this old metal shop stool. He had two of these metal shop stools in his garage. I got one and my brother has one. These are likely the exact stools that we used to sit on and watch him work when we were kids. I think that's pretty damn cool. Secondly, when we were cleaning out the garage, I grabbed his old machinist lamp. This lamp is pretty cool. I do have a Nice compact fluorescent bulb in there, which is kind of sacrilege in a in a lamp that's probably 60 years old. But what are you going to do? I've had that on my workbench for 20 years, and now it's actually back illuminating work. I think that's pretty damn cool. And last but not least, 75 pounds worth of steel. I've been hauling around this old Craftsman toolbox. This is my grandfather's toolbox that he would take to and from work or to and from uh, shops that he worked in and let's take a look at what's inside of this. So I think this is really really cool. Inside this box I found the original padlock. They used to lock this up. See it says Sears. The little thing that says Sears is brass as are the keys. I have both keys, both original keys 
that say Sears on it. I just think that's the coolest, coolest thing. Turn the key, and it works. The lock still works. That is just so awesome. So there's the inside of the box. Look at all these. Look at all these cutting. Obviously, this this cutter is not designed for this small of a machine. A, uh, a 10 by 24 still in most machinist circles considered considered a hobby machine and not uh, anything serious. However, all these guys will fit right into that lamp post tool. Uh, that lamppost tool holder and I have just I've got shims and I have look at all these cutters 99 out of 100 of the, well most of these have carbide tips most of them have carbide some of these are for different softer metals these have been ground for specific applications I've actually I actually have a handbook that um, teaches and talks about how to cut these for specific needs depending on what you're doing I've got to really research on that however like this is just full of little bits these are all these are all high strength steel and oh, I can't, I'm, just, I'm so excited that I can finally use this stuff like I said I've been lugging this heavy box this whole thing is full of cutters just full of them different angles different things I want to do oh it's awesome in the bottom drawer up I've got marking chalk I have uh, boring bars different shims but these are these are going to be extremely useful in my farting around and working on this machine these will all work perfectly with this guy oops so another series of, of cutters different just different cuts here's a tool holder this would be a parting a parting tool right here but it uh, you can put different different types of ends in here different types of cutting ends in here cutting bits whatever you want to call them oh it's just got a little bit of everything that's a big cutting tool right there exciting oh yeah there it is more little bits and, and pieces and different things that holders here's a big boring bar this one would not work on this machine obviously but it's cool nonetheless. I got stuff, man. I got stuff. Different indicators. Oh, yeah, look at that. I can only imagine what he made that for. If this is your desired effect, if you're doing maybe making a tool handle or something where you kind of want that knurled checkerboard pattern, he has two different two different gauge size of these rollers. There's a device that rolls the the tool stock or your round stock I should say in between here it's not in this toolbox I'm gonna have to buy one if I ever plan on making stuff like this it's very cool it's very cool you got two kinds two kinds depending on how coarse you want it to be oh, of course so yeah so it's super exciting I'm super super what am I doing with pencil I'm extremely excited about being able to use this toolbox use the stuff that's in this toolbox didn't cost me an arm and a leg to get this done and that's enough talking let's watch this thing work so I'll show you this thing on turned on real quick you get to hear what it sounds like I think it sounds fantastic and then I need to get to work my hands aren't dirty because I've been playing with this thing I wish they were I wish this dirt was from this tool but it's this dirt is from cleaning the shop there behind you and over there and throwing stuff away and just cleaning house man I am in a serious cleaning mode but enough talking let's get this going you can turn the motor on set the belt and she runs I do need a new rubber belt I mentioned that already but it's pretty darn cool and then this also is that in frame I guess it is this also changes direction that's the easy way to change your cutting head direction depending on your application it's very cool it's very cool indeed gears are nice and quiet everything's working well hell even the auto feed works you engage the gear for the auto feed pull back the lever like that oops come off the belt come off the pulley I should say and then you engage this See the handle moving? Nice and easy. 
Works well. The gears are silent. Yeah, so there she is, the old Logan, 10 by 24 metal lathe. Awesome. I can't wait. I mean, I look at stuff like this, just how tight the seams are, how accurate everything can be, and I just I can't wait to see how this is going to improve my game in fabrication. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. I got to get back to cleaning up around here, and maybe tonight. Uh, Maybe tonight I'll be able to put some fun things in here and, and make a couple of videos, I guess. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Gotta run. See ya!